We've been picking a number of figs here, guys, pretty much every day. Um, I get about a plate of figs every day uh, at this time of the year. It's been um, really awesome because I remember in prior years I've been getting, you know, like a plate maybe three or four days out of the year. Um, whereas now I'm getting them pretty much every day at this time of the year. It's, it's September 7th and um, what I want to do for you guys is actually not go over all of these but talk about one fig, a couple figs in particular because they're just so damn good. Um, you can see over here, this is I believe uh, a Col de Dom Blanc, I'm not mistaken. But what I also have on here is a Col de Dom Grease. And <laughs> these Col de Dom figs are just so good that I feel like I have to talk about them. As well as we have a, a Campanieri over here. This is the first one off of my tree. I was actually really impressed by it. Um, so we're going to do a separate video on that, but today's video I want to talk about Col de Dom Grease because this fig is just so damn good. Uh, I had my Col de Dom Blanc, by the way, as my top fig, and I still do. Uh, this is definitely the tastiest fig I have, but some of them vary in quality. Um, and the one that is definitely there right now that's cut in half that I just showed you guys. That fig, um, here's one actually right here that didn't ripen probably that correctly. You can see the bottom half of it here is a bit hard and disformed, but this Col de Dom grease here definitely competes with the best Col de Dom Blancs I've ripened. So I figure I wanna show you guys and talk about this fig here. Um, and just talk about how special it is. I wanna show you guys the tree. This is honestly the first year I've been getting Col de Dom grease to ripen. Um, that bird just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> but there is a, a Col de Dom grease tree that I've had for a number of years. I've had it for a long time. I mean, look how big the, the trunk is, how old the trunk is. Um, this tree and the Col de Doms just seem to really take their sweet time, guys. They don't really perform very well here. Um, I think grafting every single one of them is a big benefit, and that's what I'm going to do from now on, this point forward. Um, otherwise, they need a bigger root system, I think. They need to get established, slow down their vigor some. You can see one up here that's pretty much ready to be picked. It's a, we're a bit in the shade right now, so I apologize. But you can see, actually... How productive this tree was this year. Um, it also put out a Breva. You can also see on this side of the tree less production and there's one also ripening on this side. But you can definitely get an idea of what the production's like. I would say it's more along the lines of a medium productive tree. Um, you know, medium to low vigor. Uh, they don't really grow that quick that quickly for me. Um, and I guess in the first couple of years they do, um, especially if you got yourself a healthy source for your Col de Dom. And because they grow so quickly, they don't really put out a lot of fruit for years. Um, and they're just kind of funky. They're a little weird in this climate. They really don't like, I think, the cool, sump, the cool springs that we have. Um, so if we get ourselves a warm spring, you get yourself a greenhouse, and you keep them in the greenhouse for a long time. I think that was honestly a big little weird mistake I did was taking out some of these trees a bit maybe too soon and then putting them here on the patio and they kind of got shocked by the colder temperatures. Um, and it kind of put them back just a, just a bit, maybe two weeks or so. Um, but like I said, the, the cold anoms really start coming into their own, but it takes honestly three years. I have a Another Col de Dom over here, this is another Col de Dom Blanc, which is actually very productive. It seems way more healthier than my other Col de Dom, um, Col de Dom Blanc. From the same source, this is also a Col de Dom from, uh, from Bode, I think is where this one originates, Col de Dom Blanc. And uh, some of these branches here, well, actually, looking at it, it's not as productive. And yeah, it's, it's semi-productive, I think, like um, like all the Kodoms are. This is maybe the maximum that I'm going to get here. I'm not really going to get this super productive 
cold and om that I think I'm hoping for unless I graft and that's what I, I sort of mentioned earlier but we also put one in the greenhouse the cold uh, a cold and om blanc and I'm I'm thinking about actually taking it out it's not really been growing all that well compared to the other trees in here um, I've been kind of rethinking what it is that I would like in here that's a a really small and, and weak Colonel Littmans that was planted and it just has taken off. And then the same thing, there's a panache back there that's also taken off. Here's the Capra figs we grew that have also taken off, but the Coldenon Blanc really hasn't done a whole lot. Um, so I'm sort of of the opinion that I really think I should be grafting certain varieties of figs. And if I'm not, I think it's a mistake. Uh, and the Coldenoms are certainly one that I think will greatly benefit being on a stronger, healthier rootstock. Um, and I think Coldenom Grease seems to be no exception, although it does seem to be a bit healthier, uh, a bit more vigorous. It doesn't seem to really need it as, as nearly as much as my Coldenom Blanc. But you can see it does have nice production on it. And the flavor, if we go over here and try it, it's just unreal. This is honestly, I think, the best fig I've ripened maybe all year. There might have been a Col de Nam Blanc that I ripened that was just as good. I honestly don't remember, but this is like exceptional. It's got the same thick, jammy pulp as the Col de Nam's that is super dense. There's no other fig like it that's as dense of a pulp. It's almost like eating cake. Um, like a baked good, I swear. Uh, it's really something special and you can't really tell by looking at it, um, but the texture is out of this world. Uh, so is it from the Col de Nam Blanc. I've had others that kind of have a similar pulp that's pretty dense, but nowhere near as dense as these. Um, you know, things like Sucret and Smith and even uh, Azores Dark and um, uh, even maybe Pastelier. Um, even the Campaneri seems pretty dense, uh, but you know, it's a really valuable trait, I think, for the mouthfeel and what these figs, not just what their flavor is, but their texture, because that's so important. Um, and it's also got a really complex, awesome sweet berry flavor. You know, if you really can get them to ripen up in better weather, they just taste phenomenal. Um, if you have a tree that's kind of struggling a bit, not that my Col de Nam Blanc is, but sometimes throughout the year it was struggling just a bit. And I think that's sort of affected a few of these figs on the tree. And it's almost actually completely done. Um, so even though it seems like my Col de Nam Grease is ripening better and it's healthier, the Col de Nam Blanc was like clearly a month ahead and put out so many phenomenal figs at this point of the season that I can't really complain. I can't really get rid of this. Uh, in fact, the, what I should get rid of is the Col de Nam Grease, but um, yeah, I think all these Col de Noms, we're gonna make a judgment call here. I think I'm gonna just graft every single one of these onto something vigorous and have a number of these Col de Nam Blanc trees and then forget about the rest of them. Um, I may get myself like a Gigantina, which is a, supposed to be a larger Col de Nam Blanc. We may have a Col de Nam Ramada for commercial purposes. Uh, the Col de Nam Blanc and Negra here is actually a nice asset as well, but it's not, it's not the same as the other Col de Noms. Um, so for me, I'm kind of just like, you know, they're so incredible, it's hard for me to get rid of any of them because I have a number of these Col de Nam trees, Roja, Grease, Blanc and Negra, Blancs, I have a number of Blancs, but um, they're a top fig guys. So I wanna thank everybody here for watching this little video. If you don't have a Col de Nam type at all, you need to get one um, and pretty much in all climates. But if you live here, you gotta give it some sort of head start. It just doesn't work here without a greenhouse. You may get one or two figs off of it. Although my Col de Nam Blanc is ripening in 90 days after pinching, so that's pretty reasonable. And it, it ripened, I think, in early August at least, um, maybe even July. I can't remember the exact date right now, but 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.